Namaste, hello, my name is Rebecca Cuddy and I sang Bunny and Crow Number One in Flight of the Hummingbird. I'm here to answer a question that we got a lot while we were on tour. Um, how do the set and props work? Specifically, how do the oculus, the trees, and the water droplets work. So I, I actually did a few little sketches that I can show you um, because usually we, we would demonstrate in person all of the different prop pieces, but um, we can't do in person. So I drew something, forgive the sketches, but I drew it. So let's start with the, um, the water droplets. Um, they are actually very much like a holiday ornament that you would hang on your Christmas tree and um, they actually are pieces of plastic and they open up at a seam and the um, glitter would fall out and that's what would represent the water when the animals were working together to try and put out the fire. The oculus this is my second drawing. If you remember, there was a big circle that we would go in and out of and it would turn around and a lot of people would wonder why, um, how is it possible that it would turn from water into the world and then into the fire. And it was on two hinges and our stage manager, Marika, hi Marika, you're wonderful, um, she would be backstage and she would be putting up the world which was actually a um, a big velcro piece of canvas and she would put it on and then she would rip it off and that's how the fire would be revealed underneath it so that's how we do that little bit of stage magic um, finally we had the trees forgive this drawing of the trees um, they're much more beautiful uh, in real life as you saw but I wanted to show you that how it works was it was like a door hinge on the bottom of the tree and Dukduktia would go behind the tree and then she would pull a lever that was holding it together. And so all of this is done where you can't see it. So she would pull the lever and the trees would then fall down. And that's how we made sure that everything was safe and, um, and easy to work with. So that is how this, those three set and props pieces worked. Um, I, I hope that you enjoyed the show and thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Sarah and I played Duke Duke Dia the Hummingbird in The Flight of the Hummingbird. My question is what inspired us to put on this opera? So this opera was actually inspired by a very old story that comes from the Quechuan people in Peru, which was then adapted into a book by Michael Nicol Yagulanes called The Flight of the Hummingbird or The Little Hummingbird. And then the people at Vancouver Opera, as well as Michael, Barry Gilson, and Maxime Goulet, turned it into an opera that is meant to inspire children and adults to have the moral courage to do whatever they can in whatever small way to help the environment. Hi, my name is Jan, and I played Bear in Flight of the Hummingbird. Because we normally have time for questions after we do our show for live audiences, we wanted to take a moment to offer answers to a few of those that are most frequently asked. The question I chose to answer was how long did it take to make the opera? Well, the idea was hatched about four years ago and work began on several things like figuring out how to transform the story in the book into what's called a libretto. Then there was the writing of several different versions of music to go along with the words, creative team discussions, and eventually some workshopping. Each of these pieces were added or completed at different times during that four-year period. Eventually, concept art was also drawn up, and the planning and building of sets and costumes was started. For that, the fabulous folks in the stage crew and costume departments at Pacific Opera Victoria were involved to help build the physical pieces of the show and bring them to life. In terms of the time it took as a cast to put on what you saw, things become a little bit more varied. Each singer and instrumentalist received music at various points, leading up to our start date of January 2nd. We were given six to eight weeks to learn and memorize our parts, and when we arrived in Vancouver, we started putting all of those parts together and creating the staging and dramatic moments. I hope that answers your question, and I hope in the future we might be able to bring you a live version of our wonderful show. Thank you for watching. 
Tanse, hello, my name is Rebecca Cuddy and I sang Bunny and Crow Number no. One in Vancouver Opera and Pacific Opera Victoria's production Flight of the Hummingbird. I'm here to answer another question, which was why was there a boat at the beginning? So it was actually Jan and I who were in the boat at the beginning, and after we finished that section we went off stage and transformed into our characters of Bunny and Bear. So the prologue at the start of the story is set a long time ago. An owl watches in horror as a ship enters into his homeland and he realizes it's carrying with it a deadly disease that makes everybody in contact with it suffer including the foreign sailors on the ship. So he is so frightened by this that instead of meeting this danger he flies away and protects himself. He felt he couldn't do anything about the problem and so he just left. Later in the opera we see that Owl is faced with the same sort of choice where he needs to decide is he going to flee and save himself because he feels he can do nothing or will he stay and help his friends and put out this fire. So you'll have to watch the show to see what happens. I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much for Hello. This is Michael Nichol Yaklonis. You know, when I first heard the story about this hummingbird, one of the questions that popped into my mind was, what happened to the forest? Did the fire burn everything down? Or did the animals put out the fire? And the more I thought about it, the more I began to think, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the animals did something. We never know what the doing will do, but we know if we don't do anything, nothing is not a good idea. What do you think?